Hello out there, my ghouls and goblins out in the fog. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, but you already knew that. Today, we are going to be hunting for one of the oldest cryptids ever sighted in North America. A devil whispered on the lips of natives of the Garden State. I couldn't be talking about anyone else other than the infamous Jersey Devil. So come, take my hand as we take a look at the top five unsettling Jersey Devil evidence that the government tried to hide. Now, if we've got any Jersey locals in the comments, please let us know if you've ever had a personal experience with this particular monster because we are desperate to hear. And even if you're not from Jersey and you got a Jersey Devil story, let us know anyway, okay? Now let's dive on in. Number five, it's unsettling origins. Unlike most cryptids whose origins are unknown, you know, they show up and start being scary one day. I couldn't tell you where the Loch Ness Monster came from or where Bigfoot came from. The Jersey Devil actually has a pretty creepy villain backstory. There are a few different popular explanations for where the creature might have come from, but the most widely shared one takes place in Leeds Point on a dark night in 1735. A Quaker woman gave birth during a thunderstorm. Now, this woman was named Mother Leeds, and she was thought to be a witch by the locals. She was said to have had many, many offspring, 12 in all, but it was her 13th that was born cursed. Some say that it came out of the womb deformed hideously, while others say that it was born normally and over time started to take on horrific characteristics that the Jersey Devil would be known for. An elongated body, winged shoulders, a large head like a horse, cloven feet, and a thick tail. The uh, kind of face only a mother could love, really. Now that's not the only point of origin for the Jersey Devil. A slight variation on a similar tale, also from Leeds Point, tells of a woman who had fallen in love with a British soldier. In 1778, the British and the Americans battled at the Battle of Chestnut Neck. Now the town rallied against this young woman, calling her love with the British soldier an act of treason against her country. The story goes that a witch in town, maybe the witch from the other story, cursed the young girl for her actions and when she gave birth, instead of a baby, a devil emerged and flew off into the night to terrorize the locals, to terrorize the area for centuries and to haunt our nightmares. And if you're looking for more stories of cryptids, conspiracies, mythology, true crime, fake crime, you already know Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some. So click on through, hit that little bell subscribe, don't miss a single video, and keep screaming. But, you know, please watch this one. You know, watch it all the way to the end, okay? We worked hard on it, kinda. Number four, all the sightings. Now, since the legend has first propagated around the 1700s, the Jersey Devil has been spotted quite, quite frequently, almost never ending, really, with this guy. Now, it definitely bears worth mentioning that a vast majority of sightings and descriptions of the Jersey Devil come to us from a time before film, when a general lack of education and knowledge and hard evidence really contributed to the creature's lasting power. It was a lot easier for rumors and myths to spread when the only evidence you have is, I saw something weird, dude, just trust me. But there were some notable sightings, even some from some famous people. One particularly notable sighting, and one of the more widespread ones, came from Joseph Bonaparte. And yes, that Bonaparte, he was Napoleon's brother. While hunting on his Borden estate in the early 18th century, he had an encounter with the fabled devil. Bonaparte was hunting alone in the woods near his house when he spotted some bizarre tracks on the ground that he hadn't recognized as an animal we'd ever seen before. And they looked like donkey or horse tracks, but confusingly, there was only two feet as if the creature was walking on its hind legs. What confused Bonaparte the most was that these tracks seemed to end abruptly in the middle of the forest, as if the creature had just up and vanished. As he was standing there, scratching his head, trying to figure out what two-legged horse he was dealing with, he suddenly found himself face to face with the Jersey Devil itself. He heard a strange hissing noise and investigated, only to be met with a horse-headed creature on its hind legs with giant wings like a bat. He was terrified and drew his weapon against it, but was too frozen in fear to do anything. This creature flew into the night, and Joseph would write of this encounter, contributing to the legacy of the Jersey Devil, the most famous thing any of the Bonapartes ever did. I don't, I don't know if his brother ever got up to anything big, really, if he ever made something of himself. No, he did. <laughs> Number three, the 1900 sightings. Although the creature has been being seen for years and years, for whatever reason, there was something in the air in Jersey in January of the 19th century. The creature couldn't go five minutes without somebody 
running into it. In January of 1909 alone, there were nearly a thousand different reports from eyewitnesses around South Jersey, all reporting on seeing similar legendary creatures harassing the area. There had to have been more than one, right? Maybe like a whole family of Jersey Devils? One report came from a notable Navy commander, one Stephen Decatur, who while testing artillery at Hanover Mills and the Pine Barrens, claims that not only did he see the Jersey Devil, but he declared war on it and opened fire. According to his reports, he had a direct confirmed hit on the Jersey Devil, who apparently could not have cared less about what happened and flew off again into the night, just completely nonplussed by being attacked by a cannonball. I'd like to think I'd be the same way. Through January 16th to the 23rd of 1909, newspapers would publish hundreds of these encounters from all over the state. It was an epidemic, all things considered. Another notable encounter of a battle with the devil was claims that the creature attacked a trolley in Bristol and police officers tried to fire upon the creature again to no effect who did not respond even whatsoever treating it like it was just little pellets and then flew off into the night. Now this wave of sightings would prompt some people to offer a reward. A newspaper printed a $10,000 reward for its capture meaning there was also a string of hoaxes with people desperate to get that money. One infamous hoax was someone who stitched wings to a kangaroo. <laughs> Poor thing. There was a race to be the one to capture the Jersey Devil with many many fakes coming out in this period while everyone had dollar signs in their eyes. Now as far as I know, no one ever collected that money because no one could prove they ever really found the Jersey Devil. So if you're looking for a quick buck, I think it's still out there and you know, we've got cameras now so maybe you can get a good shot of it. Number 2. Some sightings. Now I thought for this list I would also include some personal sightings from more recent history of the Jersey Devil, you know? It's one thing to talk about ones from the 1900s, the 1700s, but I thought we'd bring it to the 20th century a little bit. This comes to us from the website Weird New Jersey, which makes sense, that's what we're talking about, detailing someone's up closer encounter with it. Take a listen to what Kelly from New Jersey had to say. As a native of Cape May County, I had the typical rite of passage trip to the Pine Barrens, the home of the devil. I was fortunate enough to go three years during my time at my four year career at CMCT. Each time I went on this trip, my canoe was followed by a heavy footed thing. With each step, I would hear branches snap under its feet, and every 10 minutes or so, I would hear a deep, beastly growl that to this day still gives me the creeps. Being in a canoe and on a class trip, it didn't really give me much opportunity to run away screaming in terror, so I just stuck it out when this would happen, and every year it was the same as if I was being followed. During my sophomore year, I was pretty confident about canoeing, so I didn't look over my shoulder much. I went canoeing with a friend of mine when we came across a bag that had been torn open and gone through. Around it were hoof prints, only bigger, bigger than a horse or a donkey's. And then I heard it. It was a cry that will haunt my dreams forever. It was part human, part animal, and full of hate. Hatred. Pure, pure anger and hatred. I nearly flipped the canoe. We left, leaving whatever it was out in the woods behind, or so I thought, because it seemed to follow us. Every time we stopped or paused, it got closer to the river, so we pushed on. Then worse came to worst, as we tipped the canoe, I heard the thing running behind us, and I thought for sure we were done for. We righted the canoe and got into it as fast as we could. Now we did make it out to safety, sun fried to a crisp, sure, missing all our valuables and our clothes, sure, but we were never never happier in our lives to be on the land again. We packed up and we left. And as we were leaving, I rested my head on the window and saw a little cottage. I looked at it until the bus was about to pass and then I saw a woman standing there. She looked at me and I could see her skin was torn. And after the bus passed, she was gone. It scared me so bad, I don't think I went into the woods for a whole year. Number one, another encounter. Our last one is going to come to us from the same source, Weird New Jersey, because you know, where else would I be getting weird stories about New Jersey from? That's the source. The next one comes to us from Mary and is a certified vintage coming to us from the 1970s. Pop your ears open and take a listen. This has haunted me since it happened in 1972. I was a senior at what was the Glassboro State College. I had heard about the Jersey Devil when I lived in South Jersey, but being from North Jersey, which is a whole different world, I thought I was far too sophisticated to believe in nonsense. But one winter night, I was driving to Glassboro from Blackwood on Green Tree Road. At the time, the road was flanked by orchards and farms. There were very few houses and there was hardly any development. I want you to know I was completely in control and awake when I caught a glimpse of something in my rear view mirror. Curious as to what it could have been, I slowed myself down so I could take a little gander. It was dark out, but moonlit enough that I had no trouble at all discerning the upright figure of a creature crossing the road from one side to the other. Rough 
roughly 25 feet behind the car. This figure stood taller than a man and had thick haunches like a goat, supporting its humanoid torso and huge head. It moved bizarrely and didn't seem at all disturbed by my being there. Now I didn't stick around long enough to see much more. No, I hit the gas and I flew to the Mansion Park apartments back in Glassboro. I was so petrified that I slept the rest of the night in my car, unwilling to go outside again, just in case I had another introduction with the Jersey Devil. Never again from that day on have I ridden on Green Tree Road, day or night. And there's not a day I haven't gone thinking of the heebie-jeebies, just thinking about that winter night so, so long ago. <laughs> Creepy. Well, that's about all she wrote for this one, my little ghouls and goblins. I hope you learned something. You let me know down below. Jersey Devil, fact or fiction? You creep on creeping on now, and I'll see you in the next one, provided I don't run face to face with the Jersey Devil.